It's not under live. We're far enough. Hello! Hi, everyone! Getting things situated. And it Making is sure we're live good. on both. Good, 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 good. And. It might be a little bit. Yeah, we were. A little rushed today. Sorry about that. Hey, uh, Lori! Some, we were uh, delivering some birthday flowers to our spiritual mama for those that didn't realize that we were uh, five minutes late, so sorry about that. But this is uh, Unstuck Unplug. Uh, I am Dave, and this is my beautiful wife, Marsha Ann. Hi, we're the Condens, and we are the founders of Unstuck Ministries, and also um, I have Butterfly Blue Ministries, and both have to do with transformation and change and just being okay changing, being okay stepping out of your comfort zone and doing something different, especially when you're cycling and continuing to do the same thing over and over again. And what we'll say is, you know, you repeat what you don't repair. Um, and cycles are, you know, to me, cycle is okay if it's a laundry cycle yeah. <laughs> or something. But when you do cycles in life and you just com continue to do the same, um, I will say, and I, uh, the same stupid, um, you know, it just, you're going to have the same outcomes. And so until we change what it is, it's producing that outcome. It's just going to stay the same. So we are big about breakthrough. We yes. are big with um, breaking out of whatever it is that you're stuck in and having breakthrough. And sometimes breakthrough takes a while. It's like you, you, you would hope that just the minute, the first time you pray, it's like a done deal. Um, but you have to remember that sometimes you've got, if you have three to four generations back, or who knows how many generations back that are in your bloodline, that's what, thir how many? 32. 32, four, 34 like 32 people, generations of people that people, have also spoken into your bloodline and have produced vows and curses and uh, addictions and sinning and so forth. And so you've kind of got all that coming up behind you. It's almost mm -hmm. like, you know, it's like this, whatever the, the, um, the turbulence, you know, that our ancestors have even produced that we have to deal with as well. So sometimes there's that you have to kind of sift through and, uh, and then our own stupid. Oh, our own stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Which we bring along with us. Yeah. yeah. We bring with us and, and we learn what we learn from our environment and our upbringing. And then, if we don't choose to do something different, we then release it into the new environment of our, our family that we are, um, you know, if we have children and so forth and so on. And so it just continues this, this cycle. So tonight's topic is a big one. And I haven't talked about it in like four years just because I got hit spiritually big time after I spoke on it at a couple of different platforms four years ago. But it's the orphan spirit. And it's so necessary to be aware of the characteristics of an orphan spirit so that you can then bypass it. Mm -hmm. um, it is not a spirit that you can just say, okay, I, re I reject it and renounce it and I break it in Jesus' name and then that's it. It kind of goes along with Jezebel, with Leviathan, where there's characteristic traits. And those characteristic traits is what attracts it to you. So as long as we have those mindsets and character traits, we're going to attract it. Um, so do you have some of those character traits? Yes, we do. We do. Um, a couple of examples. Sure. You want to, here you go. You might be able to read that better than I can. Oh yeah. Without my glasses. <clears throat> Absolutely not. Uh, uh, some, of the, some of the recognized character traits of an orphan would be like, uh, feelings of not belonging, loneliness, uh, no purpose. You don't fit in. Uh, not good enough. And, uh, you might even say that as a child. I don't think I belong to this family. Even, even Maybe I was adopted. I did that. I remember doing that too. I, I, I just didn't fit in. I think, I think, even though I was a twin, I think I was adopted and maybe they just don't want to tell me. Yeah, I, I had a whole story. Me and my cousin Dan, we worked out that we were really brothers, but we were adopted into different, yeah. And you believe these lies then, and then it becomes a part of your identity. And so then you walk in the state of orphan, never fitting in. You might not be able to fit in in your workplace. You will maybe go from job to job to job to job, never fitting in, and it's, of course, everyone else's problem. Um, you will attract orphan-minded people to you, so the two, you'll just, like, um, get all orphany together and um, 
<laughs> you feed into each other. Mm -hmm. um, shocker, we attracted. Now imagine that. <clears throat> so yeah. well, um, another one would be like uh, speaking neg negatively, um, uh, negative about uh, others, so you can feel better about yourself. Basically, bring someone else down so you can yeah. bring yourself up. And that's a true. That's true. We talk bad about other people to feel better about ourselves. So be mindful of that because that is that's orphan mentality, um, right. which then will attract it again to you. The, the point here is to be what I'm always like awareness leads to wholeness if we choose to we can become mm -hmm. aware but it's what are we doing with that awareness am I still walking in my own flesh and pride wanting to stay as I am or am I willing to humble myself and and try something different take on a different perspective which would be God's right. um, we're big about the word of God and in the word of God Jeremiah 1 5 it says I knew you before I placed you in your mother's womb so therefore we're not an orphan. He already knew us. And even if, even if we were adopted, we, he still knew us before that process. Right. Um, an orphan spirit comes in a lot of times if there was actually an adoption situation where the parents sure. did give them up. But it does not mean that's the only case. And I think that's where people get mistaken and misled. Right. Because I was a twin and um, was in my blood line my my family of origin it was my biological family yet i felt not wanted yet i felt invisible and forgotten and the reason why was because as a twin and in the army back then um they didn't have all the all the equipment they have now and so um my mother didn't know that she had twins until the very end so my little infant self partnered with the one that was didn't, wasn't known about. Mm. Uh, so I kind of carried that and continued to carry that. And then there was another time that I remember my mom used to always say, and she didn't know she was doing, you know, she was doing any harm. Um, but she used to say, um, if it, if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't be here because your dad wanted to stop at two children. And so she used to always say that, but in kind of in boasting of herself, but I wanted you. And so, um, but what that told my little, my little girl was, oh, but my dad doesn't. So there brings in that orphan spirit and that orphan mentality. Uh, what about you? What did, where do you think you grabbed a hold of it? That lie? Oh, mom wanted a girl. Okay. I was a third boy. Mom wanted a girl. So therefore, I'm not wanted. That was mine. I'm not significant. There's where it can come in. Yep. So just be, in, it's be aware of where the doors are open because doors open in the physical are same as spiritual. What happens in the physical is happening in the spiritual too and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So as you open a door, you can open a door spiritually, a window, all of that lines up. Um, I always say like recently we had, like, I guess it was a couple of years ago, we had our roof redone. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, well, great. We have a new covering in the spirit mm -hmm. too. So just see things in the natural. It's also the spiritual. Um, but yeah, the orphan spirit, it's it's just becoming aware of really who you are and you are gods you're not your parents and i think that's what happens right. is we think we own things we think we own our children um we think we own our husband um right. or vice versa no god is the <clears throat> god of all and he created all in likeness of himself in his image um, in his reflection, so therefore everything belongs to him, everything in this. Everything you see is God's, and therefore everything within you is God's, and so then you belong to him. And if you belong to God, you belong everywhere. Right. So it's so being no matter mindful. Where you're at, right. No matter where you're at, you belong. Right. Because? Because he says so. Because he says so. And that's all that matters. Right. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. It only matters what God says. And God says that he would leave the 99 to Go come after you. Yeah. Right. So it's like, wow, that's, if that's yeah, not also, something about work. He also knew you before you were born. Right. That's you, Jeremiah right. 1, 5. And there's so many things with scripture that say he will never leave us or forsake us. And he will, he came, for, you know, he comes after you. Right. He comes after us. He's chosen us. Um and it's, it's just being mindful of that as I am chosen by God. I'm set apart. It's speaking scripture over you, speaking the word of God over you because the word of God breaks all chains. And so does the blood of Jesus. And, and Jesus, just the name of Jesus breaks the chains of bondage. And what you have to ask yourself, what am I, what am I 
chained to? What bondage am I in? Because sometimes we don't even recognize what we're carrying around or what we're, in a sense, imprisoned to. In many cases, our heart is imprisoned. Mm -hmm. And we've allowed our heart to be placed in bondage based on someone said to us, something someone did to us, and we don't know that we are actually allowing them to have so much power over us, and over us as a person. Um, so yeah, the, a few of the truths that are important um, that you would, that a, God, what the voice of God would say in, in comparison in um, to say a voice of an orphan spirit. Sorry about that's our dog. I'm sorry. Yeah, our dog's door. making noise. Sorry. She's just trying to get herself comfortable on the bed. Yeah. I think um, she's finally laid down. Sorry about that. Yes, there's power in the name of Jesus. That's correct. And, and in agreement with that too, um, a truth of God is I will always love you where the orphan will say no one loves you. Right. Um, God will say I chose you. You are mine. An orphan spirit will say no one wants you. No one mm -hmm. loves you. No one sees you. No one hears you. Um, God will say you are perfectly made. An orphan spirit will say you are not enough. They're, they're always the opposite. Um, God will say you belong to me and an orphan spirit will say you don't fit in anywhere. Um, God will say I would leave the 99 just for you. Um, an orphan will whisper no one would care if you went missing. And I, rem I remember thinking that I could leave this house, pack my bags and leave and they yeah. wouldn't even know I was gone. And, and, almost, <laughs> and almost doing it sometimes thinking let's see how long it would be until they'd even notice that I was missing. <laughs> and those are the lies, you know, because it's not even true. And God would say, I planned you with a purpose. And he does. He has a purpose for each one of us. And the orphan will say, you are a mistake. That's another thing. If you were, if if your mother got pregnant and she didn't know she was pregnant, and or if she got, I I had a pregnancy out of wedlock, um, and so there's stress there. There's a uh, time frame where you don't know the baby's there, and the baby senses these things, and that's when the orphan spirit can come in. It can. I have, I think, in inner healing, have seen it come in in the womb more than any other time. It's generational, so if mom and dad float in this, there's a very good mm -hmm. chance you are too because they released it upon you. It's almost like they, they de unknowingly defiled you with the, what their beliefs were. Oh, the generational are, curses. Come yeah, and, and it is a, it's almost like what we call a stream, and mm -hmm. it will come and it will flow in the generations. And then the word of God and the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus is what you have to use to stop it, to stop the mm -hmm. flow. Because it's a negative flow and it's a destructive flow and it will destroy identities. Uh, and the whole, the sole purpose of the orphan spirit is to keep you from your recognizing whose you belong to. It keeps right. you from recognizing your kingdom identity. Therefore, right. out of your kingdom, um, just what you're supposed to be doing in life, your ministry. Right. If, you, if, you, if you can't walk in your true identity, you're not going to walk in your true calling. You're not going to be able to uh, be all you're supposed to be. Right. Yeah. And that includes a husband or a wife mm -hmm. or a mom or, sure. or a daughter or any of it. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, cool. We, uh, <laughs> 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 well, it, it's good that it's good that good. It, it feels really good when you when you walk out of the the orphan mentality. Yeah, it really does, yeah. and it's that it, but it's still a continuous. Um, journey sure. of recognizing when you might be reopening a door and right. coming into a belief of a mindset that, or having a mindset. Um, we'll just put one. Let's pick one. Number 12. What is Number it? 12. Struggles with inner happiness, acceptance, love, and peace. No matter how successful they are in life, they will continue to struggle with their own self-worth and self-value. And that comes from not having any admiration or affirmation as a child from mm -hmm. most likely your dad. If dad did not say 
oh, I just love you. You're my princess, or I'm so proud of you, son. You're such a uh, you're such a great son. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're a boy. I'm so glad you're a girl. Recognizing who they are and their true identity of that they are a girl. They are a boy. Um, they're not a combination of the two. Um, it's recognizing and it's not allowing confusion to come in. It's not allowing any kind of poisoning to come in where they're going to question who they are and what their true identity is. And when the dad does not speak this truth out, um, right. just like we need, we, the father's voice is what Adam heard. And so he was awakened from that. That's how he came into an awakening was from the father's voice. And, and we need the same. We need our fathers to speak life over us. And when the fathers don't, they are really coming out of what they're to be doing based on what God says. Um, and we can wither. And it sure. is, there is, if a child doesn't receive love, there's actually research that's been done on that where they can die if they're not ever held or right. s spoken yeah, love in into. Um, even plants. If they, yes. they've noticed a difference between plants that are spoken love over and plants that They're are spoken negative negative. and that they will shrivel up. So we, you have to look at your heart like that, your brain, every part of you is that we can shrivel up when we are, don't have life spoken into now us. Now there's, uh, there's, I'm going to say there's probably people out there like uh, we don't have our fathers any longer. No, we do not. But this doesn't mean that you you're, can't have spiritual fathers speaking life into you and speaking that over you. Uh, like we have spiritual parents, we do have spiritual, parents. and they speak life into us. Um, so if you're if you're feeling like you're an orphan or don't matter or left out, and you, and you don't, and your dad is not speaking life into you, get in with get in with a church, yeah, and and get in and 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 and, and find, find someone, ask someone to start to be your spiritual father, right, and spiritual uh, mother, and actually get and have that have someone mentoring you or speaking into you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that helped us because when we first got married, the Lord brought probably two or three couples that were much older than us into our lives, and they right. just started speaking life into us. And so they kind of mm -hmm. um, became they they helped us heal with our mother and father wounds, right? Um, because they took the place of it. And we're we're um, tonight we went to deliver flowers to our spiritual mom, who's it's her birthday or seventy ninth birthday today, but. Um, our spiritual dad has been dealing with cancer for 14 right. years, and so he's um, it's it's winning the battle. So that's been something we've had to deal with too. It's just learning how to love them now um, when they're they're I'd have to say in a vulnerable place. Right. But how sweet of the Lord to do that, so that we can kind of be a daughter and son to them too mm -hmm. during this time. Um, I have found for myself that sometimes that happiness was so hard. Mm. It was almost like I could never f feel happy, no matter how hard I tried. It just wouldn't flourish. It was like it would get to a certain point and then it would just wilt, uh, wither again. Mm -hmm. And it didn't matter how much I prayed. It didn't matter how much I spoke the word. It didn't matter uh, when, um, at the end of the day, I just still felt so, you know, sullen. Um, I'd maybe feel happy for a little while and then it would just be oh, gone again. And I remember just super frustrated about that. I knew about Orphan. I knew all of that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it just goes into digging deeper into where you came into an agreement with something um, of even that. When was that spoken over me? And so the Lord had showed me a time... Um, and this was one of those where I will go after, I will go after and ask Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is amazing and he is a third person. He is separate and it's so important to just be super um, intimate with him as well. And so in one of my journeys of restoration, I, I went after that lie. And so he had showed me where my mother... Unknowingly again, she just used to say, "It didn't. If you were awake, you were crying." And so she was talking about when I was very little um, and the difficulties for her having that. And but what I heard was, "You're sad, you know, and you're that's just who you are, and um, you're a miserable person." And so somewhere, mm -hmm. my little baby agreed with that. And just said, okay, well, then I'm just a miserable person who brings misery to others. 
Uh, and so I had to go in there and break that lie because it's not true. I mean, when, when I was born, they celebrated. Heaven celebrated at my birth. And so it's coming out of agreement with the lie of the enemy, which is to destroy and coming into agreement with what God says. Um, and it sometimes takes work and you have to really well, yeah, you battle. Have to, you have to dig into, you have to get to the root of the lie. What's the lie that you're believing? That you're an orphan instead of a son or a daughter. Yeah. And that was, uh, I mean, going in our, my own journey was getting to the root of digging down. But okay, I believed I, my mom wanted a girl. That was what I was basing my orphan mentality was from. It wasn't until I he was showing me, no, that's not true, but that's what I thought. Mm-hmm. And so based on that lie, that's what how I lived a lot of my life. And it's not about the brain, it's the heart. Once the heart agrees with it is when it will then manifest in the present. So sometimes it's it's digging in and and getting to the root of what the lie is that you're believing to help propel you out of the the orphan mentality. Right, yeah. And being good to yourself in the process. Don't get all uh, bent out of shape and frustrated at yourself. You know, it's just like, okay, I'm going to give myself grace as I walk this out. Right. Um, another thing is works mentality. That's a sign of work. I'm glad I don't have that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, tends I'm to the- have a works mentality and will go through life striving to achieve more. Will believe they need to work for love, acceptance, and approval from God and others. So that yeah. that's those are the ones that work very hard in the church too. I mean, they just work, work, work. They they sign up for everything. Um, yeah, yes, men. Uh, yes, women. Mm. You're just always saying yeah. Have, and that's part of the codependency too. Right. So your identity is in that. It's like okay, I received a lot of my identity from working. So then I'm just going to continue to believe that that is my my worth, is by the my work. Mm. And so, but it's still when you think about a slave, which is similar to an orphan. The right. slave had to work, and so they were not free. Um, it's similar to that. And there's another one here too. Um, has a tendency to wander and never uh, feel at home mm. um, or at rest. Sorry, will will change jobs, residences, mm-hmm. and relationships often um, due to this mindset and inner turmoil. In most cases, the only person, place, or thing um, is to blame. So there, that shame blames. So you're just you're always blaming somebody else for your choices. Uh, and what I will say is, is this is how you have to look at your, you know, your outcomes and so forth, and to see what your fruit looks like. You can look at your fruit, and you can. I think Ryan said that you can look at your fruit and see the root. Oh, yeah. um, but obviously, you can look at the fruit and see the seed, you know, because right. the seed is what comes first. There's not a root system. There's a seed first, then the root system. So we're always like, go after the seed. Yeah, the you seed. can cut the root, but the, it can still grow back. Right. Um, get the seed. Um, the seed is what you need. Um, <laughs> sorry. Hey, we're into rhyming. Rhyme, rhyme. I'm starting to hear the, the schoolhouse rock songs yeah. in my head. Like, oh, good. But... <sighs> It, okay, what I call is a vagabond spirit, right. though, but I think it lines up with this, where they do. You just go from job to job to job, from sometimes church well, yeah, to church. Don't, church. A, you, don't, you don't feel like a place that you belong. Yeah. You, an orphan doesn't feel like they belong. And so that is the... Always in need of yeah. money, always in need of something, need of help. Um, it kind of all... See, because an orphan's going to also... what's gonna. This is what you got to understand. There's groupings. Okay, there, it's just not one spirit or one demon. There's a group of them, and they come together, and they all, like, hang out. It's like a party. Woo-hoo. And part of that is, is poverty. You know, if you think right. about an orphan who doesn't have a home, well, he's going to also most likely be please. poor. Right, so there's all these that kind of, and they and vagabond, going from a gypsy mentality, one place to the next, going, you know, you think of circus people, one they travel to different locations Downtown. and do their little acts and um, never really finding their place. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of what this spirit does. And it keeps you in this um, state of um, just, what would you say that? Just a wilderness, almost like a wilderness um, in constantly going um, uncertain, unsure of where you're to be. What you're to be, I don't know what I'm to be, I don't know what kind of job, um, unable to hold a job, unable to follow through 
whether it's school, whether it's um, goals. Mm-hmm. A lot of times orphans can't even set goals or set dreams or write about their dreams. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was hard was even saying okay what is our let's do a dream board mm-hmm. um, it took us a little while to think about that and say no we oh, are right. worthy of dreams and we're worthy of fulfilling those dreams because the Lord God is about advancements he's about surplus oh, he's about sonship and, and daughtership mm-hmm. so he's about uh, adoption yes that we are adopted and grafted in and so there is that and that word grafted you know, if you think about that yep the, uh, so we have a different lineage, and so we don't have to we don't have to stay with the old mindset. Mm-hmm. We can walk in the new mindset that Christ gives us, and that's 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 taking those lies and replacing it with the truth, so we can walk out His truth in our lives. Mm-hmm. And and what I said earlier too, it's it's a daily reminder. Yeah. Doctor Caroline Leaf says it takes seven minutes a day for sixty three days to change a habit. And that includes a, um, a a brain pathway too, which is where it's established first, is in the brain and the path, the neuro, um, path, whatever, the neurotransmitters within the brain and how they're created by God. Um, so many times people think, oh, 21 days to, for a new habit. No, that's incorrect. It's 63, it's three sets of 21. But that's it. If you think about seven minutes a day to go ahead and speak truth over you, shifts things in 63 days. It, you won't have that old mindset anymore. You'll have a brand new one mm-hmm. that's going to bring good fruit. Um, seven minutes a day. I mean, come on. That's like what brushing your teeth mm-hmm. and you know picking out your clothes or something. Yep. It's not a whole lot of time out of a 24-hour period. But yet, so many people can't stick to that. So the challenge is, and this in itself will go against an orphan spirit and mentality, is sticking to it, (laughs) is actually seeing it through, Mm -hmm. Um, starting a Bible study, finishing it. I don't care if it's a a three-day plan in your your, uh, U-verse, finish it. Start it, finish it. Um, Start a project, finish it. It's like do things that would be the opposite of what this mentality produces and it's amazing then that's part of the battle that's part of then the victory because the victory is won jesus jesus is the victory it's finished so uh, we just have to do the part of not partnering with these lies and that's why it says to wear the armor Mm -hmm. every day and that we're not fighting flesh and blood um it's all Mm -hmm. throughout the bible um Yes, praise God for the spirit of sonship, it, yeah. definitely. And there's so much freedom when we can enter into a kingdom identity versus a orphan yes. or a identity or a slave identity right. or a poverty identity, um, whatever that may be. I find that orphan with that, besides poverty spirit, um, rejection comes in with that. Um, rejection and orphan kind of are buds. And uh, in many cases, a rejection happened, which produced the orphan to come in. Um, As dad, like in Dave, that was a rejection. Mom said, I wanted a girl. Rejection. Mine, too, is rejection. Yes. Uh, They didn't even know about me in the womb. Rejection. Feeling forgotten. Um, There can be even a time where you had an experience where you got, where you were lost. Uh, in a mall or in any store and you you sense this place of nobody uh, okay wow I'm lost I'm forgotten Mm -hmm. it can come in then too um so it's just being aware so whether we know what strategies um to fight the battle battle um there there needs to be battle plans just like any army the marines Anybody, any if you read about the the mm-hmm. wars in the Bible, there were strategies taken to fight the war, mm-hmm. and we have to do the same. How can we outsmart the enemy? That's right, Don. Orphan and slave will keep you from your destiny. They will. They are destiny destroyers. Yeah. That is their mo. Um, they have a routine. I'm sure with pom poms. D E S T I N Y. Destroy us. <laughs> but but we have the victory of yeah. the cross, so therefore we it's it's done. It's a done deal. Um, we just have to be aware of that. We have to walk in the awareness of who our 
Daddy is. We have to walk in the awareness of who Holy Spirit is. We have to walk in the awareness of who Jesus is. And then know that we um, we belong to the King of Kings. We belong um, to the Lord of Lords. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Most High God, Adonai, El Shaddai. Um, yeah, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, um, the God of Peace. And let that peace rest upon you so that it transforms everything within you. Yeah, so that's really... Yeah. So thank you guys. This is part one. Uh, next week, uh, we're going to have guests with us. Mm-hmm. We are going to have um, Dan and Shannon, Shannon Lewis. They're going to come visit us for a bit, and we're going to chat, and then we're going to do an Unstuck episode. And they'll share their testimony with this as well and what they've experienced. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. If we have, you have questions, please feel free to ask. I'm going to, I'm going to, what I hear, see him doing right now, and I'm going to ask you wherever you are to stand up where you are. Um, Dave and I did this recently with our, our dear, uh, kind of our spiritual mentor who keeps us, uh, he kind of, we, we go to him for checkups. Mm-hmm. It's important. Go for checkups. It's just like you would tune up your car. Go and get tune-ups. Uh, make sure that you're clean. Make sure that you haven't opened any doors or windows uh, because everything we speak out, whatever we're carrying, we're, is released too. Um, stand up where you are, and I want you to see uh, where you're standing. You're standing in your bloodline of your ancestors. And right in front of you is the bloodline of Jesus. And it's free of all of it. It does not have orphan. It does not have rejection. It does not have poverty. It does not have abuse. It does not have trauma. It does not have neglect. It does not have um, depression. It does not have suicidal thoughts. Anything that you're dealing with right now. It does not have um, what, just a sense of... of not belonging or not fitting in or not being or not measuring up it's not it's perfect it's the perfect restoring resurrecting blood of Jesus and his bloodline it does not have sickness and i felt that really quick there is no sickness in the bloodline of Jesus there is no mental sickness there is no physical sickness there is no spiritual sickness in the perfect bloodline of Jesus. And I want you, I desire, I cannot force this, but I ask that you would choose you and Jesus tonight and step out of your old bloodline right now and just step into Jesus's bloodline and just declare this after me. Just say, Jesus, I choose today to no longer partner with anything that was in my bloodline and I ask now for you to sever all ties Mm -hmm. with my bloodline on both sides of my family everything that they flowed in I choose to no longer flow in as I step into your perfect bloodline and I ask you now to cleanse me with this perfect bloodline to seal me in your perfect love and to release into me everything that you say about me Help me to receive this. Allow me to receive this. Break down the walls that I might be placing to not be able to hear you. Break them down now in Jesus' name and let your love, your purest of love that is established and rooted and grounded in this perfect bloodline to flow over me and into me and to heal me and restore me and make me brand new. I accept my kingdom identity as my inheritance it is mine i own it i accept it i receive it deep into my heart and touch your heart deep into my heart into my brain into my body into every cell of my body into the core of my existence in jesus's mighty and powerful name i declare amen he's gonna blow the show for <laughs> And see that as it's 
now you're new. You are a new creation, and you are in a new bloodline. So now you only receive the old if you step back. So keep stepping forward and be aware of when you might be partnering with a lie. And the minute you partner with it, amen, Laura, thank you. Agree, you know, amen means I agree. It's so important to say amen. It means you're in agreement. Um, so sometimes shout it, amen, glory to God. Um, but whenever a lie comes in, grab it. And, and I, I examine it. And I'm like, you know what? This is not what the Lord says about mm -hmm. me. So I'm flushing it down the toilet. However you want to dispose of it, just dispose of it. I give it to you, Jesus. And I receive your truth and ask Jesus for his truth. And always replace the lie with his truth. And as you do that, it becomes that becomes a new habit. And new pathways are created in your brain. And you will become what you think. And that is just how it is. We become and we produce what we speak over us. So if you're speaking the word of God over you, you will become that of what the Lord says about you. So, right. yeah, in Jesus' name. Love you guys. All right. Thank you for this Bye. time. And we'll Sharon. see you. Yes. yes. Share. What? Share. No. Share. <laughs> Share and tell your friends. All right. Bye. Bye God guys. bless.